So I'm here with Billy Rios, who just got finished uh, doing a talk with Terry McCorkle about uh, ICS security and uh, some some bugs that you guys have found, one specifically in the Tritium Niagara uh, software framework. Um, tell me a little bit about that bug and how you guys found it. Okay. Um, well, it, it's actually two different bugs. Uh, they're not fixed yet, so we didn't go over the details, but um, it's, it's very re reliable. Um, it basically takes advantage of just a coding mistake that we found. Um, we, we managed to get a hold of the, the devices and the software that were associated with it, and so we took a really good look and did a deep dive as to how all that stuff works. And once we understood how it worked, the vulnerability was pretty obvious to us. And then once we wrote an exploit for that specific vulnerability, we had to find another one to actually you know, go all the way and get system or root on a machine. Yep. And so that took, you know, a week or two before we could find one of those. Okay. So, but very reliable. Um, it works against every implementation that we've seen. When we talk to the vendor, it works against every version of the software that they have out right now. And they're looking to uh, get a patch out uh, soon and within the next couple of weeks. Okay, and just to give people an idea, what kind of systems does the Niagara software run? Like, where do you find this kind of software? Right, it's very versatile. And uh, we, we actually gave some examples in the talk of places where this is being used. And the examples that we got were actually from Tritium's website. So they have a lot of different case studies about different organizations that are implementing the software and how they've implemented. And they, give, they go into very, very good detail. And so you'll find places like hospitals, regular buildings, corporate campuses, military installations, DOD stuff. Um, and there's just a list of these things on their website. And if you really want to take a good look as, as to how they've implemented all their stuff, they have network diagrams that show their specific implementation, okay. what specific versions of the software they're using in, in their use cases and, and all that sort of stuff. So, so it's, it's a fairly new phenomenon for researchers to be taking a hard look at this kind of, uh, at these kind of software products and systems, as, you know, as opposed to like server systems or desktop systems. Where would you say the state of the security and security response mechanism is in, in, with those vendors as a, you know, compared to the typical software vendors you used to deal with? Yeah, it's definitely all across the board. Um, most of the bigger vendors, they're building security teams and response teams to deal with security researchers and to adequately triage incoming issues. Um, we've seen a, you know, a dramatic change even over the last two years as to how all this stuff is going down. Okay. And uh, they're moving pretty quickly. Some of the smaller and medium-sized companies, I don't think they're there yet. Uh, compared to just general software companies or general IT companies in the regular world that are not ICS, I think they're far behind. But hopefully they can catch up soon. So they're sort of in the in the middle of the process that the bigger software vendors like Microsoft and everybody was in, you know, yeah. 10, 8, 10 years yeah. ago. Okay. Right. I mean, right now, even the biggest vendors in the ICS world, uh, they don't have a process that's as mature as Microsoft's. Um, they don't have processes that are mature like an Adobe. And so, but they're they're trying to get there though. It's going to take some time, but they'll get there eventually. All right, Billy. Thanks very much for your time. Appreciate it. All right. yeah. Thanks.